hello everyone how's it going welcome back to our channel in today's video we're gonna learn how to move PrestaShaft from localhost to server at first we'll have to take backup of our database and for that we'll have to go to localhost slash php my admin So we're here at PHPMyAdmin. From here, we'll have to select our database and then export. So as we selected our database, we'll go to the export option and we'll find an SQL file here. So by pressing go, our download will be started. As we can see, our download has started and the download will be finished in a bit. So after that, we'll have to go to our localhost folder in our PC and there we'll find the PrestaShop folder. So let's go there. So this is our localhost folder and this is our PrestaShop folder. This is where we've installed PrestaShop. And now we'll have to select all the files and make a zip. Here we've selected all the files and by right clicking it, we'll find the option of compress. So by clicking compress, our compressing process will be started and it will be finished in a bit, but it won't take long though. And now we'll go to our cPanel. And here we'll create a subdomain as i'm doing this just to show you guys so i'm not gonna install it in public.html so i'll just create a subdomain just for a test purpose and now we'll go to our subdomains option and here we'll find create a subdomain option and we'll have to create a name any name will be okay so i'm gonna name it demo sub So after naming it, our root link will be demostub dot our main domain name. Then click on create. Our subdomain is created. Now we're gonna go to our subdomain folder in the file manager. And here we're gonna upload the zip of our PrestaShop that we already compressed. We can see the upload option. Here we can select the file or either we can drag it here and drop it. So I'm gonna drag it and drop it. Just pretty simple. this would take some time so meanwhile we'll migrate our database we'll have to go inside of our cpanel here we'll search for mysql database option here we can see mysql databases we'll have to go inside of it we can create a new database from here so i'm gonna create a name and the name is same as the old localhost database name and by clicking create it will be created now let's go back now we'll create a user with any name we want and, the, and this part will be added from the domain so I'll go with a new name called demo user. And our desired password. And you can generate a password as well. And we'll have to type the password again. Then by clicking create user, our user will be created. 
go back. Now add users to database. So we'll use the demo user and the database name would be database underscore store. So by adding it, our process here will be completed. So use, uh, we'll click on all privileges, make changes. Now we'll go to our C panel. And PHP my admin. And here we'll select our database and we'll find an option import. So we'll click on import. And here we can see an option choose file. So we'll select the file that we already downloaded from our local host, the SQL file. So we'll select the SQL file and press go. And now our old database files will be added here. Now here again, we'll select our database. And now in the search bar, we'll search for shop underscore URL. And we'll click on it. And we'll click edit. Because we'll have to edit this file. Here we'll have to put our subdomain link. I'm just gonna copy and paste it here. And also the same link in the SSL as well. And in the physical URL, we'll just have to put forward slash. Then by clicking go, the process is complete and successfully updated. And now we'll check if our zip is uploaded or not. I think it's uploaded. Here we can see the zip file and now we'll extract it here. Clicking extract files, our extraction process will be started and it will take some time. So I'm just gonna skip the video. So as we can see, our extraction process is completed. Now in the file manager, we'll find a folder called app. We'll go inside of it and then config folder. And then there's a file called parameters.php. We'll have to edit this one. Here we'll find all the information, all the database information. And we'll have to change some information from here. The database uh, host will be same as localhost and the database name would be our new database name that was that we set uh, according to our domain and also the new do, uh, new user that we set in the domain and also the password And after changing the password, everything else would be same. Then we'll have to save changes. Successfully changed. So this is our admin panel link. We're gonna copy and paste it along with our domain name. We'll try to enter the email address and password to go to the back office of our Presta shop. There's a cache problem over here. This is a very common problem of Presta shop. So we'll try incognito mode and we'll paste the same link over here and we'll try it here. If this doesn't work, we'll try clearing cache and we'll try it on another browser. Looks like it's not working. So in file manager, we'll go to var folder and cache 
and we'll have to delete cache. Now let's check again. And if this still doesn't work, we'll try another browser. Looks like it's not working. So we'll open another browser and we'll try again. So I'm going to press the link here. And I think it will solve the problem. These problems are pretty common in PrestaShop, so do not worry if you ever face these kind of problems. There we go, we're at the back office. Now we'll try to go to our front office on the Chrome. I'm gonna press the link here. 404 not found. So do not worry if you if you see this notice. This is pretty normal. We can fix it in a bit. Uh, go to your shop parameters and traffic and SEO option. Uh, scroll down. Here we can see an option of friendly URL. We'll change the yes to no and save it. Now, if we go to our browser and reload the page, everything will be okay. So let's check it. Here I'm reloading the page. Here we go. We're at the back office. So do not worry if you see these kind of problems. And as we can see, the site is here and everything looks normal. So this was a more common and normal problem. So don't be scared of it if you ever face it. After doing this, go back to the page and in the friendly URL, make the note to yes and save it. That's it. Our Presta Shop is ready. Anyways, if you liked our video, please put a like on it. If you have any question regarding this video, please leave it in a comment. If you did not subscribe our channel, please subscribe our channel for more videos like this. And we'll try to help you and we'll try to reach you with our solutions. Thank you for watching this video.